The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm drinking my morning coffee. Something's in there. I'm going to get another coffee at the break. We'll see what's happening. Good morning, everybody. We got the S&Ps. Yeah, I just had a sip of my coffee, and there's something in that coffee. I don't know what's going on. Good morning. Monday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got a 20, about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets in positive territory to kick things off. We got a huge week in the S&Ps. So we got five of the seven, magnificent seven, reporting their numbers. We got jobs numbers on Friday. We got Bank of Japan out with their numbers uh, later this week as well. Just looking at that, but let's kick it off in the market right now. We got S&Ps, higher price to the tune of about five tenths percent, trading at 58.79 right now. NASDAQ 100, we're up 150 points, 20,650. You see the pop on Sunday night, and we're pushing almost the highs that we had on Friday, 20,707. You check out the Dow right now, up 200 points. Now the Dow, we were just down five straight days on the Dow. You see the action on the Dow in terms of where we are. Right now, you're up 204 points, up half a percent. We'll see if we can hold on the open. And you got the Russell, up by a solid eight tenths percent, 2239. Bitcoin, how about it, man? Pushing 70,000 yet again. Bitcoin, up $2,200 on the pop, which pushing 69,545. And how about crude, man? If you have not, I'm just going to get a napkin, folks. Excuse me. I know, reaching off. I got something. Right as I did that, I took a sip of my morning latte. All right, I'm on a latte kick right now. Okay, took a sip of my latte this morning. Something was in there. I thought I remedied it. Took a sip right before the program. No, there's something going on in my coffee, man. I'm not touching that one. Crude, down four dollars and sixty-five cents. I tell you, man. I've talked about. It. I was at Sam's last night. I'm getting gas. The price for gas was two ninety-eight. I said, man, that's an amazing price. The pumps were full. Okay, it was almost 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. That's when Sam's closes on Friday night. I actually finished up shopping right at 6 o'clock in Sam's, got out. Everyone's rushing out. The pumps are full. I said, ah, that's a bummer. I could have locked in some good prices. And what happens? Futures open. I said, no, I'm going to wait. That's a good one. As a trader, I said, no, I'm going to wait for the prices to come down. And yeah, crude is down almost $5 this morning. We just had a 66 handle, and the attacks have spared the energy facilities in Iran. And so a de-escalation is priced in, risk off, crude prices lower to a dramatic degree. We'll see if they hold today, but nonetheless, $67.20 in crude. Gold pulling back a bit, but all things considered, gold is hanging tough, man. Down $5 at $27.49, but you put this thing on a daily, and yeah, continues to trade near all-time highs. You're just chopping right at $27.50, man. You're building cars, as my dad would say. $27.48.80 right now on that gold contract. You jump over to the dollar index, and we got the dollar chopping just above 104. Pretty similar situation. We'll see where we go. Now, we get earnings this week. We get the jobs number for October on Friday. We have an election coming up. A week from tomorrow, can't believe it's eight days away. That is remarkable. Uh, and then we have a Fed meeting to follow. The next two weeks, folks, are going to determine a lot in terms of where we go. It's amazing always when this stuff comes down the line. We're here. It's happening. And, yeah, it's happening uh, right now, as they would say, right? Definitely. All right. Let's jump around to some of the headlines that we got. And we're going to kick it off. And as Bloomberg puts it, 10 days. I called it two weeks. Maybe they're talking about 10 trading days. 10 days that can make or break the markets. Man, it's everywhere, right? We have oil retreating, of course. We're going to get into some of the equities here. But yeah, almost half of the S&P 500 companies report over the next 10 days. You get five of the seven big ones in terms of the Magnificent Seven. Eli Lilly, Exxon, Mobile, Visa are some of the companies. NVIDIA, they're about a month out. All right, yeah. You get inflation data, the PCE. You get employment report for October, right? Yeah, 
It's uh, PCE out Thursday. The jobs number out Friday. Employers expanded payrolls by 110,000 in October. That's what the market's looking for. That's the expectations. But we have a little bit of hurricane volatility in there. And you sure do, folks. If you're in, vol in Florida, okay, there is debris everywhere still. There are companies still coming back in terms of businesses, debris everywhere, period. So there's going to be volatility in that number. And then, of course, you get the Fed. Yeah, and they are out the 7th. Yes, they start their meeting Wednesday the 6th. They are out the 7th is when they are out the Fed. So you're talking about it, man, in a big way. Yeah, they're talking about earnings in here. All right, let's jump around to a couple of companies, and we'll kick things off with Boeing. Why know it? Why not? $19 billion. How about it, man? Boeing, $19 billion is the number they're talking about here. They're selling 90 million common, 5 billion depository shares. They're pushing $22 billion with over allotments is what they might bring in. And uh, if you're on the union, you're probably a little worried about that because, yeah, that's going to shore up their balance sheet. That's going to give them the strength potentially to hold out a little bit longer. And the machinists, they are on strike, and we'll see that where that progresses. But you had them turning down another vote on Thursday. Not a coincidence, folks, that they're shoring things up for a long battle. Because, yeah, you go into a negotiation, you want to be as strong as you can. And that's what they're doing right now. you got Boeing right now trading down about $2 at 152.90 right now from 155 down about $2. But, yeah, they're going to bring in about $22 billion. The common share portion alone would total just under $14 billion, and that's at the 155 price. That's the largest share sale since SoftBank sold part of its stake in T-Mobile in 2020. Not often do they push out that type of money, but they need it, man. And with over allotments, as they say, you might push almost $22 billion there. The company's on pace to use around $4 billion in cash during the fourth quarter. And that's going to bring their cash flow to $14 billion. And yeah, if you're in the union, right, this matters, folks. It's a part of the union. It's part of their business, too, but it's all related. They need more cash to get through the crunch they have going on. They need more cash to get through the union strike they have going on and if you're checking out Boeing now this one's getting a little bit longer term okay but you were in that down channel you break about really not intact I mean you come back to there this thing's going bankrupt and Boeing is not going bankrupt folks okay but with that said you could come back down at 125 man that is out there you get the double bottom out from 2022 right and we are I'm gonna put this back on a weekly there's your 120 122 or so area and, yeah, you're coming down, and you're coming down with volume, folks. That's the other part of this, okay? You are coming down with volume. Just look at this swath of volume you have from September. These are weeklies. Last eight weeks, you are crushing volume at these lows. We'll see if we can bounce, but right now you're down about $2 for Boeing shares, trading at 153 We jump around to some of the Magnificent 7. You got Apple shares. Going to be a little bit higher with the market this morning. You're pushing 132.93. You jump over to Microsoft shares. Trading up about three dollars to four thirty one right now. You jump over to Google. Look at that, Google man, up by more than three dollars. Amazon shares. We'll get there. This morning pushing one eighty nine. This market, and we jump over to Nvidia shares. Nvidia pushing one forty three in the pre market. We jump over to Tesla shares. Tesla higher as well, trading at two seventy seventy one. All right, folks, come back. We'll talk about some of those companies coming out with the earnings. We'll take a look at the yen. We'll take a look at some of those yields as well. We got the 10-year approaching 4 and a quarter percent as well, 4.25%. Stay tuned, folks. Coming right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now up about 33 points. And yeah, you talk about it, man. I'm just jumping around. Forgive me. There we go. Uh, pushing 58, 78. So it is going to be interesting with all the news, with all the action coming down the line right now. And as we talked about, the 10 days, right, in terms of where we go. And yeah, they talk about it in terms of the pivotal week. Okay, you talk about a pivotal week, you talk about a 10 days. It's a big one this week, but pretty remarkable, man. Does it get any bigger than a, a presidential election and a Fed meeting back to back? In the context of where we are right now, those are pretty important, and those are next week. But guess what? It's this week as well. Uh, but boy, let's start jumping into it, and let's take a look at that dollar yen. You jump over to the dollar yen. And yeah, we got to jump up to 153. We're back to 152. This driving some of the action so far on the dollar. The dollar been so strong recently. But yes, we have jumping down. Come on. There's almost so much getting ready for, folks, in terms of where we are. Ah, oh, that's not the one. Forgive me, folks. I'm trying to jump around to that yen story that we were talking about here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so the yen, keeping rates where they are for right now, okay, is the story there. And, you know, it all ties back to the dollar, right? You jump over to the DXY, and there's your move. Inverse of there. Dollar back to 104.20 right now. We were all the way up to 104.57. I mean, how about the technical move, right? If you're looking for a technical move in this market, boom, you hit the technical move and you drop like a rock. We'll see if that holds. Mixed it about the 104 price level, 
okay? And that's going to correlate to you. got to keep your eye on yields, man. All right, we're coming into that Fed's preferred inflation gauge on Thursday. We're coming into jobs numbers on Friday. And the Fed has recalibrated to a much more reasonable level. I was talking to some friends and business associates this weekend. And we were just talking about, and, you know, we're saying, man, it's remarkable that the Fed cuts 50 basis points, right? And then rates rise to the dramatic degree they have. Well, that's because of the future, folks, as we know, right? That's because of the future. Now, take into consideration that the market is basically certain that the Fed is going to cut by 25 basis points. This is your probability, 99 to 1, that they're going to cut by 25 basis points. What's remarkable here is we get so much data, folks, by the time this meeting comes to fruition, okay, that it's to be that confident, okay, the risk lies on the other side, as in you're talking about all the earnings, you're talking about the inflation gauge we get on Thursday, you're talking about employment numbers we get on Friday, which includes wages in there, and then you're talking about we get a presidential election. Not sure the presidential election, it shouldn't tie into things, right? But just factor in this week alone with many earnings and then the inflation numbers and then the jobs numbers, you know, if if jobs are hot and wages are hot and the economy continues to power forward and earnings deliver, the market thinks they're going to cut anyway. And maybe they will. We will see. But you go out to June, okay, and this is where it gets so interesting, right? June, I've done it before, but look at where the rates were. A month ago, September 27th, and here's the thing. This doesn't even encapsulate the real move now. I'm only going back to September 27th when the 10-year had already dropped a full point, okay? So you got to go back on this a little bit further than that to get where rates actually were peaking at. But right now, you can see the biggest area of range is the market thinks that by the June meeting, okay? Now, keep in mind, the market's already – pricing in that we're going to get another cut in November. So if you factor in, we're going to be at 4.5% on November 7th. The market thinks there, there's a very real chance that they might have, what, three quarter point cuts over the next five meetings following. That is reasonable, folks, okay? That is reasonable. That's a reasonable pace. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to see rates getting above where they are right now. You're going to need another impetus to get higher. The market has recalibrated to a much more reasonable stance, got ahead of itself, got over its skis for sure, and we'll see how it goes from there. But, yeah. Nonetheless, we're sitting at about 4.25% right now, and maybe this is. I mean, there's a little bit of a tail, right? We saw the move in yields. We saw the move in the dollar. You have the yields in terms of lower price, higher yield, and we've recalibrated a bit. We're back to, what, 111 right now, and you've seen the same move in the dollar. And we've pulled back to 104.21, but as our man Basil Chapman says, the day is young. We jump over to that gold contract. Gold down about $5, trading at 27.50. Gold has been remarkably strong now. For you gold bulls out there, you know what I will say is remarkably strong in the face of, as we've talked about, a remarkably strong dollar. And it seems like I've given you the case there that if yields are pushing four and a quarter percent and that the market is reasonably pricing the expectation for cuts going forward, it's going to be difficult for the dollar to make that next leg higher. Is there a possibility we chop around? Yes, there is. Is there a possibility we pull back? Yeah. Um, but I think the risk reward setup right now is that yields at four and a quarter on the 10 percent the risk is that the market again says the fed is going to need to cut okay in terms of where this economy may be and if that happens you could see the dollar potentially weaken a little you could see gold maybe get that next leg up to the upside we'll find out right that's the beauty of it all right we got to take a look at that crude contract again because longer term right now for crude this is a remarkable level as we're pushing $67. Now, as technical traders here, we're at a pretty dicey level, okay? Are we really going to see crude? I mean, look at this, right? Look at this technical level, folks, okay? So you have your spikes, you have your back against the wall. Get those spikes up on your shoulder if you're going short because this is a critical level. Anytime we've come down here, these are weekly bars. It hasn't lasted too long. Okay, and I've given you the comparison before. It does not make sense that somehow a gallon of crude is going to cost less than almost a gallon of water at this point, right? We're approaching some pretty bonkers 
levels in terms of where you are in this market. Now, we've seen it before, though. Okay? We've seen it before many times. We're not going back to where we were in the 90s, folks. That's not happening. Okay? Um, but, yeah, it is pretty remarkable. On a, Just on a technical level, we're sitting at $67. We'll talk to our man Teddy Kegstad on Wednesdays, always do. Um, he put out his Tiger Forex report this morning. But, yeah, I, I would be looking to go along. Let's put it this way. I'm going to go out and fill up my gas tank at $67 all day, every day, folks. And I'm not going to be playing where I'm going to say, no, I'm going to wait for it to go lower. Okay? And listen to yourself sometimes because that's what you're doing as a trader, right? You're looking at the risk-reward propositions. And as a risk-reward trader, there is a far greater risk, in my opinion, that we're approaching a level that is support for crude and yeah, can you get lower? Yes, you can. But you see how quickly we can get up to $67. Tensions in the Mideast. We got political elections coming down the line. And then, of course, we just have um, jobs numbers, et cetera, inflation. All right, folks, we're coming back for the open. We got the S&Ps up by 32 points right now. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's right now up by 30. Nasdaq up by 100 as we open. Dow up by 240, 230. We'll make it. And uh, 
Yeah, you got to talk about inflation, man. This one defies it, but the election season is here in terms of almost defies logic, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, if you're watching both candidates, man, and you're a Trump fan and you're looking for a Trump victory and you're looking for yields and you're looking for prices, okay, I know everything that get, gets said doesn't have to happen, but this one's from the journal, okay? Economists warn of new inflation hazards after the election, and yeah, both candidates, right? It's a bummer, man, in terms of the fiscal responsibility, period. End of sentence, okay? Um, but at this point, Trump's talking about taxes on tariffs, but no taxes on federal taxes. I don't know how any of it plays out. It's kind of, you know, recess for all during school type approach. I don't understand how these types of logics get thrown about. But the tariff side of thing, you better believe that higher prices are coming, folks. And I bring it up because, you know, this is the journal. Okay, this is the journal. This is not um, for, for what it is. You understand what it's saying. Okay. And you're talking about inflationary factors to the nth degree, especially on Trump's side. So that's coming. We're only, what, eight days away right now. And you better believe, okay, that this bond market, if you get a Trump victory, you better be careful. I was watching 60 Minutes last night, the last part of this as well, folks. Okay? The one thing I want to talk about that is remarkable is you're going to see it happen again. Okay? You're going to see it happen again because it's how our elections are decided. Now, they had the Secretary of State from Pennsylvania on. And the way Pennsylvania works, folks, by the legislature is that they cannot start counting early votes until 7 a.m. on Election Day. Okay, Pennsylvania is going to be a very important state, as it always is. They cannot start counting. Did you hear that? Early votes until election morning. Many other states can get an early run on that. They have a split legislature. Okay, I think the House and the Senate on the state side are split between Democrats and Republicans. And it's very unfortunate they didn't remedy this because even as the Secretary of State was talking about, that four-day window, okay, uh, gives anybody, but Trump in particular, okay, folks, the ammunition he needs to unload whatever he wants to unload and throw stuff at the wall, okay? It's going to happen. Get ready for it. Pennsylvania's going to take three to four days to figure out. They cannot start counting election votes that are cast um, by mail-in ballots until election morning. And the bummer of it is, they're doing it by hand, okay? And it's legitimate, folks. Everything's got a paper trail. Um, it's out there, and you, you're going to hear it. Get ready for it. It's happening, so you're not going to really know, potentially, for two, three, four days down the line. They did that purposely, folks. They could have remedied that, okay? They could have remedied that. And unfortunately, that's where we stand. So what's going to happen is it's going to happen again, folks. There's going to be critical states. The numbers are going to be coming in two, three, four days later, okay? And you're going to hear Trump, whether he's behind, he's going to be talking about keep counting. If he's ahead, he's going to say stop the count. He's going to be throwing stuff against the wall as he's going to. And it's going to take three to four days, unfortunately. So we'll see what happens. But if he's in there, okay, get ready for higher yields because there's no way – that this market is not going to reprice instantly if Trump wins and you see the tariffs coming down the line on many consumer goods. And yes, in the long run, you can argue that's going to be the best thing for America in the long term. OK, um, but it's happening, folks. And if that happens, you could see a rip roaring descent on price and higher yield. And what would that cause for you gold bulls out there? That would cause dollar strength. OK, because you're going to be dealing with higher yields. OK, and what would that cause as well? Well, you get a little dollar strength. It's going to be interesting because there's a lot coming into the election, though. The yields could cause the dollar strength side to be higher. But the instability could be a little bit of a risk there with everything thrown against the wall. Yeah. And when I talk about instability, folks, you better believe it. I don't know even what he stands for at this point. OK, in terms of no federal taxes, stuff like that. I can't make sense of that. And I don't know if the, I don't know how the market's going to make sense of that if that comes to play, but it's going to happen, folks. Okay, get ready for it. And it's just unfortunate at that level of things because we're now going through the third Trump election, right? And I just want to have an election, man. Okay, I want to have democracy. Who wins? Who loses? Okay. Pennsylvania, that Secretary of State, man, it was a great one. If you get the chance on 60 Minutes, and I think it was the live one last night, but sometimes I think I end up on a loop on old 60 Minutes. I think, no, this one was the live one, I think, last night. And 
60 minutes is great, man. And this poor guy, man, last go around four years ago, he's getting death threats for his wife, for his kids, for his children. He's got to move out of his house, okay? All because Trump's out there saying that he's fixing the election. It's an unfortunate revelation that seems to go down the line, folks, and it's going to happen again. And just remember, it's by design, okay? The electorate um, could have made sure that their representative fixed this problem in Pennsylvania, and they did not. They could have started counting those early ballots early instead of having to wait four days to tell you who won. They did not, okay? They have to take – it was a great thing. So what happens is mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania – come in two envelopes. There's a small envelope, okay, inside a big envelope, okay? And what happens is is that they have to open up one envelope, get to the second envelope, open up that envelope. They have to backfold the ballot so that it can go through the system. It's a lengthy process, and they have a tremendous amount of ballots to go through there. Yeah, it's going to be a big one to the nth degree, right? I love answering a question with a question, right? That's 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 always the kicker. If tariffs are so bad, Lucius Lars, why didn't Biden remove them? That's not a statement. That's a question. That's a question with a question. Okay, that's not a statement. Um, tariffs, on, man, you guys got everything in there. That's the bummer. You got everything. D- disagree with me on principle, not on not on rhetoric. Okay, and that's where the problem is here. The things that Trump are saying are real. Okay, you don't think that he's being real? It's just a negotiation. That's one thing, but they're real. Those tariffs he's talking about are not what's in place right now, okay? They're not what's in place right now, period. End of sentence. And yes, will they harm China? You better believe they'll harm China. If that's your end game, then so be it. Make the case. But there's collateral damage, and the collateral damage is the pricing that American consumers are going to end up paying on those price levels. And then you talk about abolishing, you know, the federal taxes, Yeah, taxes should be lower. I'm all for that. I live in Florida. I love low taxes. It's part of the reason I live here, folks, okay? There's nuance in the middle here. I can't fight through any of the gibberish that's coming out of Trump, to put it lightly, in terms of what is actually on the table when you're talking about free lunch for everybody, free recess across the board, and China's going to pay all the taxes. It's hogwash. No hiding it. No shame in the game, man. That's the deal. Crude prices, 67.45. Let's jump around to some of those FANG stocks, man, as we kick off the trading session in a very important week. We got Amazon up by about 8 tenths percent right now. And to get back to it, folks, that is a great conversation, okay? I love having these conversations about tariffs. I love it. I cannot stand that I know that Trump is – Trump talks about he won Pennsylvania twice, folks, okay? That is the unfortunate part about this. I love the conversation about taxes, tariffs, about – you know, you're right. Biden kept those tariffs in there. Great point. OK, these are great points that make democracy. You know what does not make democracy? Arguing that votes don't matter and everyone's cheating when you lose. That's the thing that drives me bananas. OK, and it should drive you bananas, too, because you're going to hear it. So get ready for it when Pennsylvania takes four days and remember what the truth is on those. OK, we'll be right back, folks. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, 
he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. All right, folks, we got the S&Ps right now holding well up 25. NASDAQ gives it up a bit, though. NASDAQ only up by about 64 points. We get back to a short-term time frame there. You did have the NASDAQ approaching 20,000, almost 700. We drop about 100 points on the open, and we're giving back all the gains. We're right back to where we were at about 6 o'clock last night. Dow holding well up about 340. The Dow had been the weakest one last week, and now we're up by about 340. And how about the Russell, man? There's a pop for you, up by 1.4%. We checked back in on yields this morning. Tenure down about three ticks right now. I'm going to keep our eye on the dollar with the dollar right now. Chopping around about 104.20. And yeah, we check back in on that gold contract. Gold, as I said, just remarkable, remarkable strong man. All right, let's check it out. We got a question in the den. I know I get everybody revved up with politics, man. Keep in mind, I love the discourse, man. All right, I love it all. Um, but remember the reality when it comes to votes, folks, because yeah, you're all right in terms of inflation, right? The debate over all that stuff but when it comes to votes all right gsm let's see what we got here we got a question so what are we doing what are we doing with gsm this morning yeah let's go get it going on stocks i like it um all right let's see what we got here what what uh, what is this equity here that we got going on what is gsn owning and holding okay and what is, what is gsm ferro globe P A P L C. What do they do? Can you, can you give me a quick one? Because I don't even have any information on this equity. But taking a look at it technically, um, I like your back against the wall. I mean, four dollars is a critical area here. You got down there at the end of 2022. You've been holding that level. Let's see where we got some volume here. Yeah, we had some volume when we were down there though too. Look at this. A little bit of light volume. Ooh, it's looking a little bit dicey, man. These volume spikes keep coming to the downside. You did have a spike higher above $5 the week of September 30th. Let's go a little bit longer term chart for this. All right. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, they're in the metals, right? Are they a miner? What are they doing? They own a silicone mine. Okay. Um, let's take a look again. So longer term, you're all over the place, man. From 25 down to 35 cents, you make a run up to $10. You've been chopping around. Yeah, I'd watch this $4 area like a hawk, man. You break before this, below this $4 area, you've been guild building cause for two years. So you're at $4.30 right now. You take a look at the daily again. You're down from that spike of almost $5. You did have volume at that high, okay? But yeah, keep your eye on this $4 area. I'd put it on a weekly... Okay, you're trading this thing a little bit longer term. 
And yeah, I'd figure out where you want to get a stop in this thing, as opposed to just following it all the way. Because, you know, what are we down? From six bucks to four thirty already, we're down from five. And whether you're talking about where we were just last month, where we were in May, and then that lower 364, I mean, maybe you give it a run there, but percentage-wise, that's just a huge number on this equity, right? Now, you know you got a volatile equity, for sure, in terms of where you are. But yeah, in the face of a lot of these, you know, we got a strong dollar, which is a little bit tough on some degrees, but boy, yeah, I'd be careful on this one, man, because we got a lot of volume on these spikes lower, continually. Even in the face, you know, you did have 11.8 million on that spike, but you gave it up, man. You know, you gave it up. Last week, we only traded 5 million. So, yeah, I'd keep it on. But thanks for the question. Bringing us back to some sanity, right, in the markets. Yeah. I know. It's going to be a dicey one, election season. Get loose. Get warm, baby. We got the presidential election in eight days. Don't let it eat you up. Don't lose any friends and family, okay? And I love the discourse in the den, man. I love it. You know, get fired up, folks. Get fired up. The the greatest. Listen, and that's why the voting deal. All right. You got to talk about it, man. We're merging the two today, but why not? OK, you got to talk about it because that's what makes America great is democracy is these conversations. OK, in the den. Listen, my opinion, everybody in the den having this discourse, very reasonable across the board when you talk about it on that level. OK, we're not talking about lunacy that is present on both sides. We're not. OK, everybody. And that's where we have to have the discourse. And that's where, again, it's unfortunate when the discourse, all the air is going to get sucked out of the room when you're going to be talking about uh, voter fraud, etc. That is not happening right now, folks. OK, can it happen? Of course it can happen. Let's see the proof of it happening. It hasn't happened yet. And the Pennsylvania deal is going to happen. Uh, and if you get a chance, folks, find that 60 minutes. Maybe I'll try and find a link to it because you talk about courage, this guy, man. You know, he's talking about getting threats from his wife, his children, his kids moving out. And that guy's in there. Why? Because that is what makes America, man, democracy. OK, I got a three year old. I got Tommy. He's got to be around. OK, this deal that, you know, everything is a scam if you lose, that is the biggest threat to democracy right now, in my opinion. It's a bummer because it takes away from the real conversations like the ones we're having right now in the den about the efficacy of those tariffs. Great conversation across the board, right? Whether you talk about, should we be cutting taxes tremendously? Well, you tie it back to that article, okay? The Committee for Responsible Federal Budget, this is what the journal's citing, folks, okay? Don't go all crazy here. Um, a group that advocates for deficit reduction. Yeah, Trump's going to add $7.5 million over the coming decade, and Harris would add about 3.5. Okay, these are real deals that go across the board. Yeah. Let's see where we go. Oh, man. It's an interesting one, to say the least, right? All right, let's check back in on Boeing shares this morning. As they're trying to push out paper to the public to balance their balance sheet a little bit better. Down by 1.7, not bad. We check out the big dog Apple shares, up by three quarters. Amazon's up a full percentage point. Look at that pop, man, up to 189 Microsoft shares this morning, basically flat. We check back in on the dollar yen. And yeah, you're now up to basically the 682 of that run in terms of where you are. It correlates to the 382 of that one, but you're really getting it. I mean, look at this volatility, man. And maybe you're heading back to 162 on this chart. Right now, we're at 152.66 right now. All right, let's check back in on some other equities. We got Tesla shares. Yeah, watch this Tesla one, folks. I was talking about some of the scribers this morning. Technically, okay, technically. This is a tough area for Tesla to get through. All right, you got the market positive today. You got Tesla down about a buck eighty, um, down six tenths percent. You got the market positive green across the board. You got tech stocks higher. I mean, this thing just traded from two twelve to two sixty seven, folks. Okay, and they did it on the forecast, which Elon shoots from the hip sometimes. All right, they had a great quarter. All right, did they have a great quarter to wipe away all those losses you had all year? I don't know if it's based on the future premise of what Elon's talking about. And just on a technical basis, look at the type of numbers you're dealing with, man, just this year. There are tons of traders that are in this equity at a substantial profit right now, right? And are they going to carry it through for the election, right? The one thing I will say, if you're holding Tesla, man, it's going to live and die on election day whether Trump wins or not. You know that because if he gets into to the administration – 
Yeah, if you're holding Tesla, man, you better be ready for some volatility to hold on the overnight session. We, I have a trade in there right now, and I don't think I'm going to hold it because Tesla could pop one way or the other 10 or 20% because he is so tied to Trump right now. Maybe you want to, but get ready for the volatility if you're holding that one over election night. And remember, the results aren't going to be known for days, no matter what everybody else says, because that's the way that democracy plays out right now, because that's how the electorate chose it. We'll be right back to finish it up, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN Education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. We're going to call this the speed round. We're going to jump around. So Mickey D's, they're up by 2.2% right now. The quarter pounder, it's back, folks. It's back in 900 affected restaurants, about a fifth of the company's footprint. They have no onions on that, and I wouldn't touch it for right now until you make sure it's okay. It's probably okay, but you get the case, right? Are you rushing back to get your quarter pounder today if that was pulled off the menu and now it's back? Jeez, I hope not. Go get a burger at somewhere else, man. You know, go make one. For, you know, just wait. Doesn't mean it's going to crush this, but they're going to play with this. Hopefully they're over it. If they're over it, yes, that's that's quite a small reprieve. They think it's just to the onions on a localized area. Nonetheless, the uh, yeah, the, um, the quarter pounder is back, folks. All right, talking about earnings, right? We're going to go through it real quick. It's a big week, as I mentioned. So where do we start? You start with Alphabet, Google. They're going to be out with their numbers Tuesday after the bell, right? Then you get Meta and Microsoft. Uh, with their numbers on Wednesday after the bell. 
Meta up by about four tenths percent today. Microsoft basically flat at 428. Thursday, you get Amazon and Apple out with their numbers. Amazon positive today. You got Apple shares positive as well. You get Intel out on Thursday as well. Then you get a couple oil companies, Chevron and Exxon on Friday. So again, what do we get? The big dogs we get on Tuesday after the bell. Now, what's interesting is you get Mickey D's speaking of before the bell tomorrow. Okay, they're going to have a lot of answering to do. Um, you got Mickey D's before the bell, and then you got Alphabet. AMD, Chipotle, Reddit, some others on Tuesday. You got Meta, Microsoft, Starbucks after the bell on Wednesday. And then you get Amazon, Apple, and even Intel after the bell on Thursday. Intel up by about 1% right now. You jump over to AMD shares up by 1%. NVIDIA shares down by 2 tenths percent. We check back in on Tesla down by about 1% per, 1 right now with the S&P holding the highs up 24 bucks right now. Gold, only down a dollar. Remarkable. All right, folks, thanks so much for kicking off your Monday trading session right here with TFNN. Stay tuned. we got a man, Basil Chapman. He's coming up next for the Tiger Technician's Hour. Have a great day. Have a safe day, folks. Stay tuned for Basil, and I'll see you tomorrow, folks. Have a great one.